Welcome to Wholesale Hotline, where we cover everything to do with wholesale real estate. I'm Jamil Damji. I'm Brent Daniels. And I am Pace Morby. And together we cover the most important parts of wholesale real estate. Lead generation. Conversion of sellers into contracts. And dispositions. Guys, remember when you're watching this show, do us a favor and squad up in the comments. Make sure that you are liking and subscribing to the YouTube channels and in the Facebook group, Wholesale Hotline. Most important, we wanna know we're doing a great job for you and helping you build your business. So go give us a review on iTunes and or Spotify. So squad up and enjoy the show. Welcome, welcome, welcome to Wholesale Hotline number 135. All of us in the same room. We've got Pace Morby, Mr. Sub 2. We've got Jamil Damji, Astro, and Keegley. And you've got Brent Daniels, Mr. Tight Shirts. Boom! <laughs> Let's get this Great. thing going. Love it. Mr. I, Tight Shirts. I am excited uh, to talk about JVs today. We're going to be going through uh, joint venture agreements and uh and really opening that up i think we've got a lot of people that have questions about it um i think you've probably done more jv agreements than anybody yes uh in the country and so it's going to be really interesting on how you break it down and how often you use them and when you use them and all that so make sure guys that number one you're squatting up in the comments section this is your networking for the day number two make sure that you're celebrating your successes that you're having if you've locked up a deal if you've sold a deal if you've made your first call if you have found your first ugly house whatever it is put it in the comments section we want to celebrate you and number three make sure that you're asking your questions what questions do you have about Jay being joint venturing with other investors. So we've got the next 87 minutes to be able to break this down with all three of us in the same room. Let's get it going. What is, I'm, what I'm, is a JV? Huh? What is a JV? Junior well, varsity. Junior varsity. Cause I tried to get on varsity, but I couldn't, they kept telling me I had to do JV. Yeah, that's true. Just what you were. You don't know this I, reference from Canada. No, no. they do that Tim, at Timmy Horton's. What's that? <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, you know, um, joint venturing, bro. Yep. That's when you are entering into uh, an agreement with another wholesaler to work a deal. Mm -hmm. Now, the interesting part, right? This the whole J, the concept of JV. First and foremost, I absolutely believe it's. One of the most important ways that we as a community can squat up with each other mm -hmm. because it allows people to bring so much of their skills and expertise to the table to help other wholesalers who have their skills and expertise that they've gone and locked up a deal. Like, say, for instance, you are an assassin, like you're a Munif, right? You're a guy like Munif. You're out there locking up deals, going to seller appointments, getting deals locked up, but you don't spend a ton of time with buyers or so let's just say you have a small little buyers list but because the market has shifted in such a dramatic fashion lately your buyers are on the sidelines right now and you really need to get your deal sold the jv guys it's the joint venture it's the most incredible tool that you can utilize to get your deal sold and the reason why it's super important to put into action is because it protects all the people and all the all the parties involved. It allows you to actually get paid from the title company, which will legitimize how you're making money in the deal. Because it actually, when you do a joint venture agreement, it makes you a principal in the original contract. Okay, why do you, is it important to become a principal in the original contract? Well, in order for you to sell your contract, you need equitable interest. Right. And that's what gives you equitable interest in the deal. Mm. So the JV is one of the most critical, important documents that we can use in this business. But that can also be a little bit of a conundrum. Mm -hmm. If, for instance, you get into a deal and somebody says they're going to bring a buyer to the table and then their buyer backs out. And now all of a sudden you're stuck in a pickle. 
So today, guys, we're going to go over all of the concepts that can all the things to watch out for, all the ways to protect yourself, all the ways to do a JV correctly and appropriately. But understand that joint venturing with your brothers and sisters in this community is one of the best ways to squat up and build relationships and to expand your network. And you're going to learn all about them today. Um, I would like to touch on JV for just a minute um, from a partnership versus JV standpoint before we get into it. Because a partnership is not necessarily a JV. Correct. Okay. A partnership is where we own an LLC together. We mm -hmm. share a bank account. We partner together. Okay. Squatting up is more of I'm dating you and we're going to do a couple of deals together through a joint venture agreement. Cody Barton, my current partner in my real estate business, him and I JV'd for six months before we got married. Yeah. It's nice. Yeah. Six months. I Smart. JV'd with Josiah and Hunter oh. for a year before we tied the knot and created Keegley. Hundreds of deals. Hundreds of deals before we, we tied the knot. Yep. So JV is a really great mechanism to utilize because the real nature of people don't really, doesn't really show up until like six months into a relationship, right? It's like dating somebody. Right, you don't see their dirty laundry. You don't see their weird cousin that has a wooden leg and an eye patch and a hook for an arm until six months and one day. Okay, now I would love to marry somebody that had a pirate for a cousin. Yeah, um, but you just—I did. <laughs> I did. Yeah, hilarious. But <laughs> you don't get the good. You don't get the juicy stuff out about people. Now, one of the things that will happen in a partnership is that you'll realize that your other partner is not dragging or carrying their own weight. Sure. Mm. And so a JV is, in my opinion, if you're ever going to partner with somebody, don't just meet somebody at a meetup or somebody in the comments and go, let's be partners. We like each other. This is amazing. I've ruined a lot of friendships that should still be my friends today because I should have JV'd, not partnered. We have very different ways we live our lives, different ways we spend our money, different ways we want to manage our assets. Jamil and I, JV, we would be really terrible partners. 100%. We, everything, every deal we've ever done has been a JV. We, right. Pace and I still to this day, well, actually, that's not true. To, today, Pace and I are actually on LLC documents for our title companies. But beyond that, yeah, not, but you, nothing. You and I don't run those. Correct. We're talking about deals, yeah. right? Yeah. Specifically yeah. with deals, you guys, JV. Now, I want to introduce one more thing because mm. the JV is... It is a, it's an oppressive document, okay? Because when you are, let's just say you're an acquisition wholesaler, you get a deal under contract, and now you've come to Wholesale Hotline, you've come to the Astro Flipping community, you've come to the Sub2 community, you've come to the TTP community, and you've said, my friends, I need help to sell this deal. Let's go. What do you do? Do you sign JV agreements with everybody? Mm. How do you do that? Because how do you transfer equitable interest to multiple people? And which one then is the actual true JV partner if there's five people out there with an executed JV with you? So we need to discuss that. Secondly, I'm not going to say that this anybody who watches Wholesale Hotline will ever be this type of person. But a joint venture agreement makes you liable for the tactics that was used to get the deal under contract. Now, let's just say, for instance, the person that you are doing business with went and lied to a little old lady about the value of their property, about how much work needed to be done, but whatever reason. What let's just say they what's let's just say they walked in and said, Hey ma'am, the sheriff is about to kick you out of your house in 30 days unless you sign this paper and I'll give you five thousand dollars to help you get out of this house. Let's just say that the techniques or tactics that they used to get the deal under contract were shady AF. Now, all of a sudden, this deal unravels in six months, and this little old lady has a, a, a grandson who's a, an attorney, and he sees everything that happened and says, this is wrong. i got to unravel this deal, and we gotta, we got to go after the people who, who lied to my grandma. Mm -hmm. Now that JV actually makes you liable because you're a principal in that original transaction. So we really want to get into the nuts and bolts of a JV. When should a JV be used versus what I prefer, which is called the exclusive and the non-exclusive option agreement. Mm, dun, 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 dun. Dang. Dang. So you just pulled a fast one on me. 
What is that? Like, I thought we were talking about, I thought there was, there was only one option is JV. Oh, my friend, there's not. Really? Yes, yes. See, this gorgeous document called the option agreement serves the same purpose of a JV. It serves the it ter, it allows you to gives you equitable interest by giving you an option to purchase the property. Having that option to purchase the property now gives you equitable equitable interest to go sell that option to somebody else. And if you do it in a non-exclusive way, a non-exclusive option to purchase is an open-ended option to purchase, meaning that you can sign 30 non-exclusive options with people and you can have 30 people out there trying to bring a buyer for your deal and it doesn't make you liable for the techniques or tactics the acquisition wholesaler used to get the deal under contract all it is is saying that you exercising an option to purchase and then once you've actually sold that deal to somebody you can convert the option into an assignment and lo and behold we have a deal done so that's the reason why we're talking about this today, because, guys, there's options out there. There's ways to do this that are more protected. The reason why we say JV more than we do options is because the original folks that many of you guys started learning wholesale from on YouTube University didn't even know what the option was. And so they just constantly have been pushing the term JV, 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 JV. And why do I know this? Because in our astro flipping community, we share with folks to go off and try to get options from acquisition wholesalers to try and sell their deal for them. And so many wholesalers are like, an option? What's that? Yeah. I would way rather JV. Yeah. Now, if you are... Before you ask this, I want to highlight, there's a lot of people throwing car guesses in the side comments right now. I asked people, what car do you think Jamil drives? Okay. And I've got Mustang. Mm -hmm. I've got Kia. Nice. This is my favorite one right here. PT Cruiser. A, a PT Cruiser. <laughs> that got Bobby laughing, okay? A PT Cruiser. Um, let's see. Guys, if anybody can guess what Jamil drives today. Today or, uh, or in any this day? In the side comments, okay? I want to know the color, the make, and the model. I will give you. I will give you. Two, I will Venmo you two hundred dollars today on Wholesale Hotline if you guys can guess what he drives. So just so we are clear, is it? I own four. I personally have four cars, and I drove one of those four cars today. Are we talking about? Do they need to? Do they need to name one of the four cars that a I drive? Any, any one of the four. I yeah. will. I will allow it. Okay. okay. I will allow it. It's gonna be a lot. <laughs> if he worked in this <laughs> office, it would have to be a truck. All right. Do you see how many trucks are out there, Pace? Yeah, a it's lot like of you trucks. You have a truck Turo business outside in your parking lot right <laughs> That's now. That's my side business. I pulled up today. I'm like, what's happening? That's is, my side business. Is Brent like, and they're all Fords, guys. It's like Brent will no. not hire you if you don't have a Ford. Okay. So, guys, you can't say Jeep. Okay. You can't say Jeep of any kind. You got to say black Jeep Wrangler, right? Those are the three things I want. I want the color, the make, the model. Okay. Make is the brand. Who makes it and what's the model? Okay. Black Range Rover. I will I will allow that. So far, wow, bro. What what do people's guesses say about you? It means nobody has a flicking clue about what I drive, but I'll tell you that actually makes me feel incredibly good because none of you are following me because you think I've got this this car or that car. Or this I, was I the whole point of me asking the yeah, question. I didn't attract you because I so, showed you some car BS. Did somebody get it? Yep. Oh. Two of them. So who was the first one that said green it's Bronco? Let's see here. They said gray Ford Bronco. Yep, it's it's higher. Up there. Somebody got it? Mm-hmm. Alan. Oh, Ryan, right there. Green Bronco. Down mm -hmm. a little bit. Where? Oh, right there. Ryan. Oh, yeah, Ryan right Thornton. <laughs> Hilarious. That's right. I don't like it when Ryan cheats. R Ryan, I owe you I owe you $200. I will Venmo that to you guys. I'm st guys, stay tuned. I'm going to give away another $200. I'm going to ask you guys a question about Brent Daniels at the end of the show. There we go. And I'm going to give away money. So, Ryan Thornton, you got $200 today guessing this. Did he already know that about you? I don't know. Have, don't are know. you picking? He follows you. My yeah, whole yeah. team does. We love yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Great. There you I go. Will, you know, I did that one video where I was in the green Bronco. Um, 
And that was the only time it was I was I, it was ever shown. But then I've I've driven it here so many times that Ryan must have seen it. Mm. Okay, so I'm gonna ask a question tonight about Brent Daniels. Something personal awesome. you guys have to guess. I'll give away another two hundred dollars. So stay tuned for that. Brent, what was your question? Let me ask hit you with this, right? So if you're if you're dispoing hmm. and you want exclusive right, you don't want somebody selling this deal to everybody else. You're gonna put in your time and effort. You're gonna put your team. You're gonna be making your calls. You're gonna be selling this deal. You're gonna want a JV agreement over an option. Well, that's a great question. I would actually, if 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 it's me, mm -hmm. I'd prefer an exclusive option. Okay. Not a JV. I Not prefer JV an exclusive all. option. Look. We do JV agreements, yeah. but we do them reluctantly because, again, I'm I would way rather have an option to purchase than to become the principal in the deal. Because you don't want to take on the liability of whatever happened before you entered into that deal. Exactly. Okay, so you got an exclusive option. Correct. Which is basically a JV, but not a JV. Correct. You're they the serve only the one same that can purpose. sell it. I'm the only person who can sell it. So everybody, should we ever use a JV? You should. You can. Because, look, guys, there's going to be thousands of people out there who didn't watch this episode of Wholesale Hotline who are only going to know the term JV agreement. And, and if you want to do their deal, if you want to market their deal, they're only going to want to sign a JV. So, of course, use a JV. OK, like, is that going to be the, the person representing or, or working with the buyer or the seller? Who's going to want a JV? The, the, the acquisition wholesaler yep. will most likely only understand the, the term it. JV. They mm. look when I just said exclusive and non-exclusive option, Pace knows what these things are, but even he was like thinking for the audience saying, hey, what? I've never heard of those. Those things exist because I can tell you that I, I would say 80%, if not, if not 60, well, it depend, you know, the Astro folks watching will absolutely know, but we've got a lot of Pace students. We've got a lot of your students on here and many of them haven't heard the term option, right? Yeah. And so these options, guys, they're incredibly powerful. They're incredibly powerful to use. Well, this is a great question. Kenneth Vaughn says, doesn't the exclusive option delay getting paid? How? How would that delay but, you getting paid? Why, why would he think that? Why, where's yeah. that I'm question sure, come from? I'm not sure because, again, in his mind, I don't know what Kenneth believes the option's purpose is. The option's purpose is just to transfer you equitable interest so that you can legally market the deal. That's it. That's all. Remember, so what happens if somebody signs an exclusive option with you and then sells it themselves? That's a breach of the contract. So only you have the option. To exactly. Sell it. So if they commit to that exclusive option, they have to go through you. It's a hand tying situation. And for me, I don't recommend the Astro students to go and actually use an exclusive option. I say, look, especially when you're beginning a new relationship with a wholesaler and you're helping them sell a deal. You should only ever ask to have them sign a non-exclusive option because, look, what if you're not successful? Right. What if you go off and you try your butt off and you and you work, 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 but you're unsuccessful in selling the deal? You've tied the original contract holder's hands from being able to sell the deal themselves. Right. You're not giving them the opportunity to go and work with other people. In my opinion, I think that's too oppressive. I believe a non-exclusive option gives everybody the right to work. Then the meritocracy wins. The one with the buyer it. who can actually get it done can get it done. What is that? What, what's the negative? What's the downside of a non-exclusive option? Well, that's when you get 30 people sending out the same deal all with different pricing. I mm -hmm. see that all the time. And that's where I think there's problems. Yeah, I agree with that. I see that all the time. I send out a, I'll, uh, this, I've sent out a deal... And then people will blast it out 85 different prices. And it's just, it, it's mayhem. It can get me, it can become mayhem. So here's where I believe it's important. You have a conversation with the act wholesaler to say, look, I'm happy to do a non-exclusive option with you, but can we come to an agreement on pricing? Like where will you, if you're going to have other people market this, can we all sell for the same price? Mm -hmm. If you've got it under contract for 500 and we're going to go off to the market and sell this for 520, can you, everybody that you're signing a non-exclusive with, or you're asking help to get help with, can we all agree that 520 is the marketing price? Yeah, but that's not what happens, right? People it's are just grabbing addresses, putting them on Excel. Well, that's a daisy chain. That's a daisy chain because no permission was even was even rendered, right? Right. When somebody just grabs someone else's deal from an email blast and yep. then shoots it off to their email list and adds on top of it. 
That to me and is then one call of the most. And go. I want it. Yep. And that, then don't commit. Exactly. That's Send one of the most me the assignment. Dangerous things that happens in this business. That's absolute malarkey. How do we prevent? Dang, I'm lo- I'm loving the words that Jamil's using. He's used meritocracy, uh-huh. malarkey. Yep. What What's another really good M word you're using today? <laughs> Memories. He, he was saying I. Like a Canadian I. Oh, you, you do? I? I, 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 oh, that's wow, it. you are way off, Brent. Oh, I, my God. I. Okay, so Marvin says, well, non-exclusive works well when you deal with a wholesaler on a regular basis and who sends you deals on a regular basis. Is that a correct statement, Jamil? I think so. I think it works well because, again, the more that you give people the option to work their own deal, the better off everyone is. Because, look, then, then this wholesaler can't point their finger at you and say, man, this was a good deal. You made me sign an exclusive option with you. You didn't sell it. Now I hate you. Mm-hmm. Because what I would do if I'm somebody off there trying to dispo a deal, I'm going to be as honest and transparent with my wholesaler that I'm working with as possible to say, I'm going to do my best. I'm going to work my hardest. I'm going to try. I'm going to call all of my best buyers. And I'm going to really put time and resources and effort into trying to sell this deal. At the same time, I don't want to, Tie your uh, your hands. I don't want to put you in a spot. How do you prevent you going out and putting all this effort into getting this deal sold, but then somebody else sells it? You don't. That's the that's the. Can you get like a exclusive for forty eight hours? I mean, you could negotiate that, and I think that once I think what Marvin is asking about, I think once you have a really established relationship with a ac wholesaler, and you want to say, look, I'd prefer not to have to run around like a chicken with my head cut off for forty eight hours trying to sell this deal. Give me some time at least. You can negotiate that and ask for a 48-hour exclusive that then converts to a non-exclusive and then bada-bing, bada-boom. Mm-hmm. But my belief is, is that in this game, that individual who works harder, that has the better buyers, that has the better relationships, that can get the trigger pulled faster, <clears throat> wins the bacon. And if you did put out time, energy, and effort into trying to get the deal done and somebody else sold it before you, then work freaking harder next time. Get faster. Be, get better buyers, be build better. better relationships, do better. This is a meritocracy, guys. This is not participation awards. We don't do that here. Mm-hmm. Ooh, dang. So you're saying you eat what you kill? Yeah, man. What? But shouldn't everybody get a participation award, like a trophy? You did a good job. Let me throw you $1,000 on this, even though you didn't sell the deal for me? No. Okay. I, no, I don't believe in that. I, don't, I, I think that when you're in it, you win it. And if you don't, you don't. You yeah. go again and you try again next time, and that's what it is. Did you guys um? Do you, do you guys remember Jasper? He's come on here. Oh yeah, I just met Jasper. Jamil, you just met Jasper in He's Miami. A sweetheart. Yeah, he is a sweetheart. Such a sweetheart. All right. Um. All right. Here we go. Ooh, Melissa says, "Pays my boyfriend saw your abs. They're implants. Don't worry about it. <laughs> no, it's no big deal." Um. Okay, so that's why I love agent outreach and especially broker outreach for the mother effer or multifamily. <laughs> uh, the, re- aye, aye. The, the relationships gets built and last a long time. They can be there sending you off market deals for 10 plus years. Jamil, how long have you been doing deals with uh, Monique Walker? Almost a decade. Should we have her come back, by the way? She really would like to because like, can I just share with you guys a text thread that I have with Monique? Um, please. Yep. All right. So, um, actually, okay. So Brent, while he's doing that, will you answer this questions? Where are you currently pulling your lists from? Yeah. Batch leads, um, batch leads.io forward slash TTP. Uh, yeah, you could use the TTP coupon. Okay. Code so for that. Or batch use leads, the, you can use the squad up batch leads.io forward slash squad up for a discount. Yep. And um, then, um, you're going to pull a lot of discounted properties there. But if you're just starting out, go find an ugly house. Like there is a one of the biggest distractions that happen when w- w- number one is education is too much of just sitting and watching YouTube and listening to podcasts and not taking action. Yeah. Because that whole Jim Jim Rohn um, uh, saying of it's not what you get out of this, it's what this gets out of you type of thing, Whoa. right? So when you're watching this show, it's not what you get out of this, it's what you this gets out of you. What action are you going to go out and take every single day, right? 
It's same with any podcast, same with any YouTube channels, all of these things, right? How is it pulling something out of you? That's the most important thing. Uh, just go out and find an ugly house and then find the property owner's phone number. You could go to True People Search if you want. You could go to White Pages if you want. You could go to Batch Skip Tracing if you want to get the, the most accurate. And then you call them up and you have a conversation with them. So that's what we're talking about. I, I just want to yeah. get I, I need you to see this so that you can verify. I can't have made this up, guys. Look, this is from uh, what day? Wednesday. OK, 6, 11 p.m. I get sent this text message thread from Monique Walker. Yep. We do a deal. And and this deal, guys, was was tremendously difficult to get done. But I got it done. Acquisition contract price, four hundred and fifty thousand. My team sold it for five twenty nine nine in today's market. Monique says, quote, I can't tell the I can't wait to tell the world about this one once we close. I actually had to cancel this deal originally. I was under contract at it at 500. Couldn't make it work. Couldn't make it work. I canceled. She said, when you cancel the first time, I reached out to other wholesalers, hedge funds, other clients, mm -hmm. fix and flippers, and nobody could give me an offer. Keegley frickin' rocks. I came in then and I told them that I could get it done at 450 and that I would personally close. No one can work the way you do and get deals done at that volume. Put me back on Wholesale Hotline, baby, because I want to shout it from the rooftops. Sorry. Legit, guys, this is this is this, and we were then able. So I was going to personally buy it at 450 thousand and had a pool. It was an Awatuki. I thought, what a great Airbnb. Airbnb. I'm going to take it, close it, but I still gave Keegley the op opportunity to go and try and sell it. Sure. And we did. 529.9, guys. The, guess, do the math. How much is that? $80,000. This month? This month. And that one deal. Massive deal? Massive deal. During the, during the recession? What's that? Oh, hey, I was going to ask you, um, what part of that do I get? What like what finders fee type of deal? But I realized I realized I wasn't involved in that deal. I, I you only eat what you kill. You know what I'm saying? It's a meritocracy. But meritocracy then it's a meritocracy. Bro. Then I also I... then I also realized I didn't thank you for dinner the other night. That, well, that was fun. That was a lot of fun. It was a three hour wait. So Jamil drops a couple hundred bucks on this. Five hundred uh, bucks. I didn't want to brag. It's okay. But okay. So it's a meritocracy. We can brag. Because my, I have to explain to my wife why I took out all that cash from the bank account. Because she's like, "Wow, you at, really at gambled a, a lot at a casino." At a casino, she's like, "You really gambled a lot." I'm like, "No, no, 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 no! Five hundred dollars of that went to go tip the lady so we could have dinner." And she's like, mm "Hmm." Legitimately, that's what happened. We go to this Korean, like, really fancy spot inside of the Hard Rock Hotel in Miami. Yeah. And she goes, "I'm sorry, there's no, there's no whatever." And I go, "What if we, what if we grease your your palms?" And she's like, "Okay." really oh yeah she's like okay no problem and no then problem. she it literally sudden, magically we got a table yeah magically got a table did she tell you how much or you just he threw said it out? 500 bucks yeah she i threw i threw out 100 before you walked up and she's like no and i was like 500 she's like really i go yeah i go my friend's rich did you hear me say that <laughs> yeah. I, I go my friend jamil's rich and so jim we had to go to an ac she goes okay go to the at i go we don't have any cash can we vend money she's like nope go get cash right now she waited for us we brought cash jamil you treated me and benson from privy an amazing dinner bro and i didn't thank you so properly delicious, dude it was so delicious it was very delicious so um that was a lot of fun daniel quijano good to see you in here mm -hmm. okay so who wants Monique Walker to come back. That's a freaking great question because eighty thousand dollars on one deal. How much does she make? She makes forty thousand of that. What? Can we give Tracy some love here? We gotta give Tracy, Tracy Richie. Love. She says, Brent, I need that bell, my guy. I've been hungry for it since May. I closed my first wholesale deal on nine seven with a ten thousand dollar assignment fee. I'm so freaking pumped. Not as pumped as TTP's arms. Tracy, we learned, celebrate you. Learned about wholesaling in May and closed in September. Bada bing, bada boom. Hey. That bell legit is louder than you guys can even imagine. You have imagine. no idea how loud that is, guys. <laughs> it, yeah, it makes you squeeze your butt cheeks when you hear it. Congratulations, Tracy. I'm so happy for you. That's absolutely incredible. Keep it going. Whatever you did, keep doing that.
Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep doing that. Keep it focused. Start tomorrow at zero. Once that check hits your account, just keep going. Keep building that momentum every single week. Every single week, you should be locking up and selling a deal. That's how you build this up. Once you get to those 50 deals a year, I mean, things are really starting to take off. And that's when you that's when you start building out a team and really doing special things. Hey, did so. you notice that we have Brad Holkman here, the executive vi uh, uh, vice president of uh, reality programming at A&E, watching us tonight on Wholesale Hotline, guys? All right. Brad. Get out of here. We've got television producers here on live watching us on wholesale hotline guys come on this this chat is popping this crew is popping you guys don't even know nowhere else to be brent throw up your right throw up your right arm let's see what this looks like real fast no Pre people get mad about this dude people are holy like, He's not crap that bro that's it's that, not real that's as big as my thighs oh, you guys Mine's growing it's not like brent so let's see brent let's see. listen we have, are insulting all the true fitness people out have, there that have you ever just, measured so, so, so your arms and, no, but I'm excited to meet Hulk Hogan in Tampa in two weeks. Oh my gosh, I'm we right? can't go. Unfortunately, we're not going to oh, we be there. No, I will. <laughs> where are we? Where are I we? Where so are we going to be? We're going to be all together. Where, Jamil? Yeah, in, that weekend in San Diego That's for right. the Bigger Pockets Convention, BPCon 2022. Incredible. We're going to be doing uh, how to thrive in a down market. Recession proof investing. We're the first is speakers at the conference. Did you know that? No 9 a.m. Sunday morning, right after registration. Come on, baby. They don't yeah, even start boy. it yet. We're before it even starts. We go up 9 a.m. Sunday morning. That's amazing. Yeah. How long are we talking? I think all of us. Three get hours. Like three hours. Between the four of us. We're all back to back to back to back. 40 minutes each. It is a relay. Oh my gosh! Yep. Who's going first? I think Jamil. Uh, Jamil is going I'm first. Second, because we 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 Jerry. stacked it right yep. um, based on topic. So what what's your topic? Mine is on um, uh, relationship based wholesaling. Mine's on talking to people. Okay, and then uh, Jerry Norton. <laughs> Do you remember his? Yeah, he's talking about um, fixing and flipping. What 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 should I talk about? Well, I think that you should talk about. Uh, uncreative financing. Yeah. <laughs> cash only. <laughs> yeah, I, cash only deals. The burn method to, actually is what I'm we talking really about. The burn method. About. I talked about uh, Buffalo's on create on uh, collective genius today on stage. How did they go? How was collective genius today, by the way? It's literally the highest level people mm -hmm. in real estate that you could even imagine. Yep. People that are doing 400, 500 deals a year that you will never see. Right. There's a lot of my students in there that like came into my program. A lot of your students, a lot of your students mm -hmm. came to your program two years ago, three years ago that like leveled crushed up it. and yep. they crushed it. And then what they do, shame on them. I had a conversation with all of my students in there. I was like, outside of sub two, like nobody knows who you are. Meanwhile, you're crushing doing 400 deals a year mm -hmm. and nobody knows who you are. You guys got to get loud. Why Why should we be getting loud, Brent? What, what benefits does that bring to you us? You become and other a people? magnet. I mean, I'm telling for you, a magnet more, for what? A magnet for opportunities, a magnet for people that are going to support you, a magnet for people that have similar brains that think the same way that you do. When you get out there and you document what you are doing and you do it in a tasteful manner where you're, it's not just look at me, look at me, look at me, but you're actually just documenting what's happening. You're going through the failures, you're going through the successes, you're going through the fears, you're going through, you know, all of the you know, the wins that you have during the day, that is exciting. And people, people will support you. People will want to be around you. And when you do that, you, you find opportunities, you find opportunities for people to bring you uh, deals. You find opportunities to raise money. You find opportunities to maybe, you know, hire incredible people. So it's, um, it's a magnet when you get loud. Yeah. I, j I literally had a two hour conversation with Daniel Quijano. You know how many people I have two hour conversations with? Very few. Very few. I have a lot of long Zooms with a lot of people, but private one-on-one -on -one conversations that are two hours long. Did just you tell him to get loud? That's all I talked Be to him better. about. I literally He's was like, incredible. Bro, not only did I talk about it, we were I laid out a game plan. Like, this is where you're going. This is what you're doing. This is the next step. He's like, all right, I'm on it. You better be freaking on it, Kihano. You're you're too damn good to, to be quiet. I realize, Pace, that you and I are both running a challenge in the, next, at the, in the third week of September. What time of the day mm. does yours go? Late at night. Mine is early in the morning. So September 21st, 22nd, 23rd at 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. Uh, we're doing the find, let, let's find Ronnie a deal. Tarek, and Musa, Tarek Al Musa and I are going to be helping 
show Ronnie how to get his first deal from start to finish, from is, 8 a.m. to it, 10 a.m. Is it Ron Rana? No, it's it, Ron, It's actually um, Tarek's childhood best friend who's a first responder. He's a fireman. Hmm. And he really he got hurt. Right now he's on workers' comp, and he really wants to get involved in real estate investing. And so Tarek and I said, you know what? We're going to get you your first deal, awesome. and I'm going to buy it. So at the end, so we really got to get a deal because I don't want to buy no shit. Well, so, I feel I feel bad for you. I took all your money on that Korean restaurant, bro. How are you going to buy anything after five hundred dollar tip? You're going to have to sell a deal. Actually, that whole dinner was probably a thousand bucks. It was more, way more than that. What it was? Yeah, <laughs> for three people, and I don't drink. That was expensive. For, for, for expensive. three people, but I did. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. <laughs> so so and so did Benson. So it was what, uh, what? So this challenge. Where's the link? Where did they go? So there's a uh, uh, Emily will be putting an event right. It's already What's the name right of now. the link, Bobby? Okay, love it. Love it. So this it's in the side chat, everybody. Please click on it. I'm gonna I'm gonna I wanna the reason why I took over the last part of your promotion is because of what's on the screen right now. Okay. Amazing. And it has actually has nothing to do with BPCon. I want you guys to understand something. When I go to these big real estate conferences, Jamil goes to these big real estate conferences, everybody comes up to us and says the same thing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Tell Brent. Where is Brent? Tell Brent. <laughs> thank you. Brent, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. you. We are the we are the leading value providers in the real estate market. In fact, we were at in, in the casino the other night, and Jamil and I went out to a meetup after we were on stage. We spoke all day. We were in the hallways meeting people for 14 hours that day. We went to a meetup until one o'clock in the morning. Mm -hmm. Crazy, right? Okay. Hung out with people privately, having giving marriage advice, doing this, doing that, nonstop helping people. So you better believe that when we go speak places, they get sold out. Okay. When we tell you guys to hurry about a ticket or hurry about a registration or a challenge is coming up, you. get your stuff together. Jamil has nothing to sell. In fact, the last challenge I was doing, I had a lady come into my challenge and, and I, I the last challenge I did was in October. So I don't do a lot of challenges. I, I, I actually pause my challenges to help you and your team do a lot more challenges. And so I, I didn't do a challenge from October until last month. So nearly nine months. This lady comes in on the fifth day and she goes, when are you going to sell us stuff? And I said, that's not what we do. Okay. If there is an opportunity you want to be in our, our mentorships, great. Figure that out. We'll never drop that stuff. We'll never talk about it. That's not what we do. We're trying to provide value, value, value. And so when somebody like Elena says, BPCon is sold out, well, it better be because we're not trying to sell things. We're trying to make sure you guys get crazy value. So when Jamil says he's got a challenge coming up on September 21, 22, 23, and when he says it's limited and there's only so, so many people can get in there. Because we're doing it on Zoom. You better freaking click the link and tell us about the it's this is part two of the elephant challenge so guys no 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 wait, your ch my challenge is not happening at the same time as yours believe me we don't need to talk about it you your challenge is happening on 21st 22nd 23rd on eventbrite it goes to a zoom here's the problem with zoom guys kicks you out it it maxes out at a thousand people okay jamil and i get two three four five thousand people that come to these things or try to register and what happens is two weeks later, they hear about it and they go, man, why didn't I know about it? Or, hey, I tried to get in, but I couldn't get in. It's because you're waiting till the last freaking minute. You're like my dad building a bookshelf in front of a locked door, for heaven's sakes. I talked about that on Sunday service last night. I watched for, it. For two, oh, you did watch it last night? I watched night? your Sunday service last you night. You what? I was on oh, my gosh. Thank you, dog. Yeah. So, guys, do not be that person. Go to the freaking link. Um, Bobby, you, you guys dropping the link in there again? Okay, they dropped it three times, guys. Let me, let me, will you put it in there one more time for me so I can put it on the screen? I'm sorry. I, I, this mouse is a little bit tricky and sticky. It is tricky. Okay, guys, so here's the thing. I also think, Jamil, I'm going to give you a suggestion. I no longer give out long links. I now have figured out uh, Jamil's nextchallenge.com or Jamil the blue genie.com should you guys should get a vanity website that everybody just knows what the name of your challenge is and go to that domain you're right because the problem is right now there's people that are like yeah i want to go click on the event right can't but they either a can't because they're on an android okay mm. b they're like i'm driving so they can't, physically can't or c they look at that and they go that's going to require what we call friction okay so this is something i've just recently implemented we're trying to make 
not only your life easier with real estate education, but we're trying to make sure you get to be able to show up places. There's a lot of stuff we throw at you guys. Now, last thing I want to say, why do we provide so much free content? Here's why we provide so much free content. It's somewhat overwhelming. Thank you. B Making Big Moves says he's signed up. Thank you guys nice. so much. Okay, good job. Here's why we make so much content is because every single person in the side chat, there's 600 people in here, have different personalities, different stations in life, different resources, different uh, mindset issues that they're currently going through. Our job is to create so much content that you as an individual have a choice to watch training that will pertain to you as an individual. Okay, if all we did was go, all right, you need to do this. We're just going to do door knocking training. 90% of people would fail because that doesn't fit their personality. Mm -hmm. So between the three of us, there's really nothing else you'll ever need. And Jerry, maybe Jerry Norton. I really like Jerry Norton stuff. He's so phenomenal. And he truly, Flips. he truly, like from the heart, gives a crap. He's yep. so good. So I would say stick to us. Stick to Jamil's challenge. It's crazy when I'm walking around these events with Jamil, people walk up to him and go, Jamil, I got my first deal from your freaking challenge. I thought it was bull crap. I thought it was another thing you're trying to upsell me into your mentorship. You literally didn't bring up your mentorship one time. The leaders in your group are helping and providing assistance, and you guys are changing the freaking game. You changed my family's legacy and their future by doing a free challenge. There was a an individual who came up and said that he made hundred and twenty thousand mm. dollars watching the Secret Weapon Challenge, and was shocked. He was in shock, and he's like, "I don't know what to do now. I have all this money. I didn't pay you for anything. I don't know what I'm supposed to do." I, I said, "You know what you're supposed to do? Go teach people." Yeah. He's like, "Well, can I join your community?" I'm like, "No, you didn't need it, did you?" He's like, "Well, can I join it anyways?" I'm like, "If you feel like you need it, join it. But if not, go teach people." Yeah. That's that is well, you you started what 2002, 2004, 2006, eight, somewhere around there, right? Mm -hmm. There was not instruction for how to go get deals, no, at the time. It was wildly frustrating. There was mm -hmm. books that you would get at Barnes and Noble mm -hmm. and Borders Bookstore that were written by attorneys that had never done a deal before. Let's be honest, right? And it was so much jargon and it was so much heady stuff and it was really tough to get through and you read the rich dad poor dads and it's great and it outlays like really good things for your mindset and financial literacy but it wasn't the blueprint on how to go out and do deals when you have challenges like this when you have opportunities to get in and actually see it in action it's you got to do it do you have any of the old school real estate things that they sold on infomercials of and course the DVD? I, I had actually, the Carlton sheets. I have Carlton sheets. I had uh, some of Robert Allen's stuff. I had all of that stuff. And it was like, look in the newspaper yeah. for for sale by owners. I never actually put any of those CDs into my computer and watched any of it. I didn't watch a single one of them. I, I ordered the Carlton sheets, you know, and then I got uh -huh. the booklets and I looked uh -huh. and I was like, this is so overwhelming. This is so overwhelming. I have no idea what any yeah. of this stuff even means. Yep. I'm telling you. Um, so take the instruction, pure instruction. Look at what she said. Leroy Wolfgram said, since joining sub two last week, I have seven, seven in a week, seven deals on the table and a 2 PM <laughs> phone conference with a sub two deal tomorrow. This has never happened to her in the three years that she's been in real estate investing or sorry that he's been in real estate investing. So productive. Leroy, you're incredible. Bad. Town. Baddest man in the whole damn, damn town. town. Better than old King Kong. Congratulations, Justin. Yeah, six thousand dollar assignment. Four months in. Beautiful. You know Emily's husband, my executive assistant. Yeah. Her husband is a personal trainer. He sent me a text message yesterday, and uh, it was an, it was incredible what I got to what I got to hear from him. He says. Yeah, Donna knows. <laughs> he said, hey, bro, just wanted to thank you for introducing me to real estate. It's changed my life. Mm -hmm. He's got $9,000 in escrow this month. And guess what he said? Also, I'm done training. Mm -hmm. He's quit being a personal trainer. So because of me, more people are going to get fat, uh, including his wallets. Oh, oh got him. 
You know, I had, uh, speaking of CDs and booklets and all that kind of stuff. So yep. when I got into creative finance and I wanted to like be the best guy, like I had two goals. I said, I, I don't want to be a creative finance investor. I want to be the creative finance investor. That yep. was my goal. And the other goal was to normalize the conversation around creative finance. That was mm -hmm. my, that was my main two things I put on my vision board. I'm still working on them. And I go out and I, sp I start buying other people's mentorships to learn and educate. The first one I bought was $47,000. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. I got a $3,000 discount y'all. Cause I'm a great negotiator. Yeah. I found out the guy had not done a deal in over 10 years. Mm hmm and that's who introduced me to a title rep who actually taught me more about creative finance than really anybody. I then was like, okay, well, I need to learn how to be even better. So I go out and I'm buying other people's stuff. I buy this guy's stuff. I'm not going to say his name. He sent me a text the other day because he found out it was him. I've never said his name on any live, but I've referenced this. I get, I literally get a box of bi three ring binders and CDs. No. This is in 2018, no. guys. 2018, I get a box of three ring binders, 2018, and a bunch of CDs. Or not, not CDs, DVDs. I had to go out and figure out how to buy a DVD player. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay, the cost, so the cost was $11,700 after like the whole thing, right? And I made a reference about it, about how like archaic that old model is and how we need to disrupt and change the whole industry. I have made multiple references about Brent Daniels being the gold standard at the time. My job was, how do I become the gold standard? How do I become a gold standard? How do we become the golden boys, the golden knights, the dark knights, right? And I made a reference to it, and then I get a text message two weeks later, and he, the guy who I bought the mentorship thing from sends me a text. He goes, we need to talk. Uh-oh. My sales are dipping because of your YouTube video. Mm-hmm. Guys, I'm not here to like make people feel good about me or anything like that. We are here to change your lives. We are here sacrificing time away from our family, our friends, our real estate deals, et cetera, to make sure that you guys take action. We do this on live. We give you guys addresses. We give you real deal, holy field examples because we want you guys to do something with it. And there's nothing better than the emotional income we get of watching people. Isn't it weird that when you teach something, mm -hmm. People go out and actually do it, and then they make money from it. Did you ever think that that would even be a I thing? I saw Steve Trang post that video of you. I saw seven of my students in there. Great. Seven in that's Collective a big, Genius. That's a big room. You know what I'm saying? Killers. Killers. Killers in that room. That's, that, that's, that started out with doing zero deals in 2018, 19. And they didn't even know what an exclusive option agreement was at the time. One of them was doing $6 million this year. Six million dollars, fifty-seven percent profitability. So that's what this is. What I'm saying is like you teach people, and you're like, okay, cool. I'm the guy. I'm the hero. They're they're gonna go and take some action. They're gonna make some money. And you know what? Even if they do ten percent of what I do, they're gonna just go crush it, right? And then you go find students like that that are doing six million dollars in a year, mm -hmm. bro. Are you doing six million in wholesale this year? No. So somebody no. you taught actually overshadows you absolutely and it actually is exactly what you want exactly we're not here 100%. to be the heroes guys we are here to be the guides so that you can be the hero of your own freaking story that's it mm. get some of that get that's some of that up. let's get that's some let's get, get some by the way that. i saw a lot of people register for jamil's challenge hundreds of people are talking about the challenge that's coming up september 21st 22nd and 23rd it's coming up next week it's on Eventbrite, and we're going to make sure that that link is put in there um, a couple of times more throughout the show. Now, Munif, congratulations to you. I had no idea that you were going to quit your job as an engineer and then marry Love Francis. Bro, you took it to another level. I, that was not nowhere in the training of how to go, get a wife inside the course, but you did it. You're a gangster. <laughs> okay, you did it. That's so good. Talk about overshadowing me. The number one closer, Munif, right there. Right here, guys, on the screen, you will see this link. This is not a scammer. This is not somebody in the side chat trying to get you to go into a love chat. I'd be curious if we could track how many people actually click on those love chat links on our wholesale hotline. You think we could figure that out? We just see it goes down from 600 to 300. <laughs> People leave. Yeah, the wholesale hotline pervs are gone. So, guys, <laughs> make sure you click on this link if you can. If not, copy and paste it into another browser. Go register. It's completely free. Jamil won't even bring up his mentorship. He has nothing to sell. He has no, no. I really, thing. just want to help the first responder get a deal. Ron, Ron, Rana. 
Ronnie, 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 Ronnie Thurnberg, I believe that's his last name, right? Skyberg, Ronnie Skyberg, Ronnie Skyberg, Tarek Al Musa's best friend growing up. Um, here we go. Lynn, Lynn says, uh, she says, this makes me so feel so good to hear. This is confirmation. I'm in the right place. I can't wait to get my first deals after learning Astro Flipping. Okay. Crushing. You know what I call Astro Flippers that walk together in a group? They just magically are like gliding through hallways. The Astro Gliders? The Astro Gliders. This yeah. is great. Okay. So, um, Lynn, here's something cool. Jamil and I are flying out to Atlanta, Georgia. Atlanta, Georgia. Bobster the Lobster. Two hand, Bobby Two Hands is coming with us. Mm. We're having a meetup in Atlanta on Friday night, 5 p.m. We will be posting stories, information. We, I think I'm dropping $7,500 on this meetup. We always do that. In, in other meetups, we spend maybe $1,000, $2,000, but Atlanta freaking shows up. I'm telling you, last time we had 380 people. Eddie Charger brought the heat. This week, I'm sure we'll have more than that. It is free. For sure. Jamil and I pay for the... Jamil bought the Korean stuff. I'll take care of the meetup. I owe him probably three or four meals. The last couple of times we went to eat, I'm like, he's paying. This guy's rich. So I owe Jamil quite a bit of money. Um, meetup Friday night, 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. Atlanta, Georgia. The details will be in our stories over the next couple of days. So please make sure you show up to that. You know what? I got to say, though, a lot of the money I make is because of you. Oh, well, is it an exclusive option agreement or is it a JV agreement? Well, so you guys neither. Know, it's an open. So what you guys know, uh, so you guys should know is this whole non exclusive the concept of squatting up. I brought it up at the scale and escape event, and I had a picture of Pace Morby up there, and I and I was explaining to him that well the audience how when I met Pace, Pace would just continue bringing me mm -hmm. relationships, people to JV with, new people to do deals with another person to do deals with another person to do deals with. And it was over and over and over and over and over again. At the time, Pace didn't have a, a huge buyer's list. He was using Keegley to sell a lot of his deals. And so to add value to his friends, myself and those people included, he was connecting us together so that we could make money together. And I kept wondering to myself, why is Pace getting himself out of the conversation? Why doesn't Pace go get the deal from this guy send it to me and make money in the in the situation which would have been totally okay for him to do guys this is the concept of reciprocity this is the concept of the universe will not do debt everything and every dime that pace has helped people find and get will find its way to him in abundance because of the heart this man has he is a magnet for opportunity he is a magnet for money he, and the and deals and the reason for and it, free korean dinners because of the way that you do it, dude, the way that you go out and you actually give people so much value, so much love, and he does it. And I, I, I remember saying this on stage. I kept asking myself, why is this man doing this? What does he have to gain? And if you've seen where our life has gone in the last few years, our friendship has blossomed not only in each other's lives. I'm the godfather of your kids, but we have a freaking tele television show together, mm -hmm. bro. What a thing, man. What a thing. Is that an exclusive option contract? Yeah, I'd say you and I are in an exclusive deal. Okay, we're in an exclusive deal. I love yeah. it. Um, I love this. Laura just did a three hour Zoom with the sub two students. So I'm getting, she's starting to get a lot more love. She's now that Monday, our daughter is getting old enough that somebody else can watch her. Laura's like, how do I pour into the students? How do I do stuff that's like super exclusive for them? So she comes in every Monday right before Wholesale Hotline and she tells the sub two students, like, how do I comp a deal, find a buyer for you, show you how to use this awesome. or do whatever? Today she stopped a foreclosure. Nice. Wow. Yeah. She, so that's what she's going to start doing on Mondays for the sub two students. Just FYI, stopping foreclosure, showing you guys exactly how to do the thing that does the thing. You know what I'm saying? And you don't have to go get a DVD player to watch those DVDs. You know what I'm saying? Just click it on, watch her do the thing, and she'll give you freaking homework. Heather Chapman. Ooh, Daniel Quijano says her stuff was dope. So, um, ooh, her passion was off the hook. I, I don't want to take credit, but she did get laid last night. So, <laughs> Um, I might have had something to do with that. You know what I'm saying? Oh, nobody likes these jokes. You know, the, the thing about what Laura, Laura and I talk about this at length with respect to comping and underwriting and understanding. And I would say that Laura is as passionate, if not more passionate than I am about underwriting and making sure that people understand how to correctly value a property. Because there's nothing more frustrating to her, myself, 
and anyone else that's involved in this business than when people get it wrong. And it's not your fault that you got it wrong. It's your fault that you didn't take the time to learn from the people to help you get it right. Okay. Okay. Oh, this is a great question. I actually get this a lot. Can I answer this one? I'm going to yeah. assume this. So Brent uh, Vlad says, why don't you guys take Brent Daniels with you guys? Guys, That's denials. There is. Oh yeah. What, Brent, Brent's oh, denials. Yeah. It's actually because he denies it. Yeah. <laughs> he didn't, he actually denies our request. So here's, That's here's, it. here's my um, assumption here and I'll let Brent clear the, clear the stories. Brent's in a very specific phase of his life right now. Mm -hmm. Okay. Brent um, has, babies and kids and things happening and he's also very much a lifestyle guy i'm making up for in what my my mind is lost time brent so much isn't so much doing that that's not the phase he's in right now and what i like about brent he's unapologetic of saying i'm not going to go out and do those things it's not that i don't want to and it's not that i don't think i could help in fact brent daniels with us all over the country we would in fact we would create a black hole of energy if we went anywhere together okay so, San Diego is going to be fun. It's just a different phase of your life that you're working on. Well, right? you, listen, you say yes and you earn income. You say no and you earn time. You say maybe and you earn nothing. Right. So uh, the things that I say That's no big, to right? are for why, the time. Why, why is that not written on my shirt the, somewhere right the, now? The time, the time that I have. I have, um, you know, my family's young and, and wild and there's some. Um, there's a lot that has to go on there and a lot, uh, you know, Seamus is nonverbal aut autistic. He was injuring himself a lot. So that really, um, that meant I had to be home, you know, I had to, I had to be around. And so he's not anymore, which is really, really, really great for our family. And so I can, I can get out a little bit more. So, uh, yeah, the, the time I would love to, I, I, and I'm very, 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 jealous of your guys trips to atlanta i need to do that because that's like my second favorite city bro i mean what's atlanta your first favorite city phoenix come on it is i love it here i do too it builds character phoenix <laughs> is a be best city in the country in my personal opinion i love that we i look forward to coming here well, I love Phoenix because we're the 48th state. And a lot of people are like, why is Arizona? So why is it all about real estate? We are still a growing state. Mm. We're the 48th state. Yeah. That means that people didn't start building houses here till the sixties. There are places on the East coast, Midwest, West coast that was started in the 1800s, a yeah. hundred years before us. So we still have the ability to spread out, which means that there's a lot of different opportunities for us here in Phoenix. That's why I think you see a lot of people that are real estate coaches or people that are in some of these higher groups and CG come from Phoenix because there's a lot of potential. There's a lot of um, uh, opportunity to make really um, big profits. And a lot of them are in TTP. Let's just be honest. Okay. Let's yeah. just be honest. Yeah. And a lot of them are in TTP. Jamil, this is a great question. I think that you got a great answer for this. Tabitha Jones asks, what's better making more money on a JV trying to squeeze out every last drop of that deal or should I make less money and focus on making a relationship? Well, it's an interesting because uh, question because Tabitha, um, the way she's phrased this means that it's either this or that. Mm. Okay, so I'd like to open up your thought process here to, to question, uh, why does it have to be one or the other, right? Why do you have to put yourself in a situation where you make less money in uh, selling it yourself? Why do you make more money in the JV, but but less money selling it yourself? Why can't you ask for the same amount or more money on the deal that you're selling on your own? I do have an answer for that. What is it? What do you think the answer for that is? It's a mindset thing that you're trying to make that other person happy by giving up some of your profit. But the best JV relationship I have are people that are fighting for the other person to make more money than the other one. So, um, and also like you bring, whatever you bring to the table, whatever makes sense for the other people, like nobody's counting each other's money in good relationships. So Jamil's right. Why is it one or the other? I think it's a mindset thing. The best relationships are where people don't count each other's money. Yeah. I, there was a, an, an astro student who coined a term called pocket watching mm. that when you're looking at, when you're in a JV deal and all of a sudden you're watching the other pocket. And you're like, what did they make? What did they make? And then all of a sudden it starts to give you that sense of loss. I had, uh, I think you really changed the industry on this because yeah, before you, yeah, yeah. for real, at yeah. least here in Phoenix. But I think that you like, 
spread it out throughout yeah. the whole country yeah. because it was like you had like two or three people that would get real mad if you were making big profits and you know yeah. who they are 100 and it turned yeah, into I just saw, nightmare I just saw one deals of and it scared the hell out of a lot yeah. of new real estate wholesalers real estate investors and you just changed the game on them well yeah because and you, I, and you hoovered up all the I did. And I, I said, you know what? This is ridiculous. The fact that you have this very scarce mindset that, yeah. that you, other people aren't allowed to make money, that other people aren't allowed to do well, that other people can't participate or make more money than you, mm -hmm. for that matter. Right. Mm -hmm. Why does it have to be that? I was in a relationship with Voldemort. Mm -hmm. That's the individual that uh, stole millions of dollars from Pace Morby. I was doing deals with Voldemort. But they didn't. He didn't take my six pack away. You know what I'm saying? Nah. Yeah. No. So Voldemort was an interesting character, right? Because he would only ever let me make five thousand mm -hmm. dollars on every deal that I did with him. Are right. you serious, and, and, bro? Never more than five k, never more than five k. Wow. So, and then I would look and I would see that he would turn around and sell it and make fifty k, sixty k, eighty k. Yet I'm over here making five, and I looked at that as an opportunity, not as a not as a kick in the balls. I was never mad at Voldemort until he ripped off my friend. Mm -hmm. I was not mad at Voldemort for only letting me make 5K because at the time the 5K is what I was. That's what the value that I that he he let me believe I was bringing to the table. Right. And so then that's what pushed me to find a better solution. Then I found the other solution that let me make more money, but wanted to be on a yacht more than he wanted to do deals. Mm -hmm. So then what did that force me to do? Find a better solution, which led me to my two business partners that I'm in partnership now with which now is the nation's largest wholesale operation. And so for me, I would like to thank Voldemort mm -hmm. for his lack of generosity. Yes. I'd like to thank the other individual for his constant vacationing. Yes. Because if it wasn't for those two people doing that business in that direction, I would not be in the situation I'm in. Yeah, today. but why not just be like them? Why not just be like them and 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 you learned that way? Why why evolve? Why change it? Because it felt why, crummy. Because being on the yeah. other side of that, when I would when I would see when I would notice that that individual made Voldemort made fifty thousand, and he and he would only make let me make mm -hmm. five. I didn't feel good about that. Right. I felt I felt that that should that that situation should be righted. And that I'm not in the power, I'm not in a powerful enough position right now mm -hmm. to change that. But when I'm in a powerful enough position, I won't play that way. Yeah. I like that. Well, thank you. Here's a great question that comes up a lot. Okay. Justin Guthrow. Um, population in my town is 250,000. For people that don't know, that's actually a relatively small town. Um, should I wholesale in my town or go virtual and wholesale in these larger metro areas like Atlanta, one of those things? How can I determine if I should stay in my backyard or not? So let me ask you a question, Justin. If I want to go and get phenomenal food, like world class food, where should I go? I should go where there's more people because more people means more business. More business means more high quality establishments coming into those places. It's the same thing with quality individuals, mm -hmm. quality car dealerships, restaurants, quality of home builders. Everything changes when you go into bigger metro areas, okay? So not only will the quality of people the um, change, but here's another thing that people don't even take into consideration. Wholesale, fix and flip, and buying and holding real estate is actually a gateway into other real estate opportunities. You don't say. Owning title companies. What? Real estate meetups. No. Building so many things I could go into. Building a lending business, et cetera. Do you how think? Many, real quick. How many people get paid on a trans real estate 51 transaction? 51 people get paid on a real estate transaction. 51 people get paid on a real estate transaction, guys. Think 51 people get paid on a real estate transaction. Wow. So when you think about that, do you want to be in a small, itty-bitty little town where there's itty-bitty little opportunities that for you? More snakes, too. Highlight that. More snakes, too. Okay, well, guess what? I like snakes. <laughs> They're tasty. Have you ever eaten a rattlesnake before? No. I have. More snakes, too. Uh, you know what? It's probably... Uh, pro it's they probably have their pro rata share. Wouldn't you, guys, wouldn't you guys say that they just have your pro rata share? There's always snakes. There's always a percentage of snakes. But the great I, thing is... I have found it's tougher in smaller towns. 
I have found that the top three to five buyers in small towns run everything. No, well, the, they're like the old they guard. Know every, they know everybody. They consider their their areas like their farm. You know how mm. real estate agents have farms? Yeah. And if they see another real estate agent go in there, I've seen it's been a lot tougher, especially in wholesaling if you're in a smaller town and there's only like three to five that are actually doing the, the fix and flips or the buy and holds. Yep. They all collude together. They all bring down the prices. And it's always that you know, super, super, super low and they want to squeeze you out. Yeah. I, I would say that you should be going into bigger opportunities because or bigger markets because you will have bigger opportunities. Guys, you don't set up sh like a Subway sandwich franchise in the middle of nowhere just because it's convenient to you. You need to go in and put it where the traffic is. Okay. Mm -hmm. It's the same thing with your real estate business. Think about your future, not necessarily today. Okay. Uh, Sharif, Sharifa. I like that name. I have an LLC question. I currently have an LLC that, of course, has my name on it, shaking my head. I can relate. Can I create the Wyoming LLC? So you guys can tell I talk a lot about LLCs. Mm -hmm. It's one of my passions is corporate structure. Um, and the, should I change the first one? Should I wait to fix that problem before doing a deal? What I would do is I wouldn't overstress it. Come to primetime. Primetime is something I do once a month. I talk about LLC problems, issues, et cetera. I usually do it for two to three hours. Come to primetime. Write that down. Follow my stories. I'll talk about it when next time I'm doing primetime. I'll set you straight, Sh Sharifa. Don't worry about it, okay? Um, Pace makes a million dollars on every deal. I freaking wish I did. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I freaking wish I did. You know what I would do? I'd probably go buy a gold mine or do something cool like Don't that. Don't you have a gold mine? I think you do. I mean, that's why I throw all the bills at you. Okay. Um, Basically, do have a gold mine. We do have a gold mine. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Cool. Here's <laughs> here's here's a couple of good ones right here. So I had Oscar ask a question. I'm pivoting more towards investing hmm. between Pace and Jamil's program. How do we navigate, or uh, or which one do we start with? Interested in your thoughts. Here's here's the thing. Okay. If you are going to get a college degree. All right. You want to go get a college degree. You want to become a doctor. You want to do whatever. You want to be a lawyer, an engineer, et cetera. Guess what, guys? There's courses that you have to take in order to accomplish that. Check the box to be able to say you have a degree. It's the same thing in real estate. I'm still in mentorships. Okay. I would tell you that any one of our programs, TTP, Jamil Damji's Astro Flipping, or my program are phenomenal for people that are new all the way to people that are have scaled businesses. At some point, you will join other mentorships like tax mentorships, raising private capital mentorships, those types of things. But the learning never stops. The day I die is the day the learning stops. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to be here in five years, in 10 years. Do me last. Okay? Do me last. Use your gut, I, Oscar. I, I love that Pace is saying that, but let me just say this as well, because he's not going to say this part. And, I, and I, Oscar, I really need you to understand this. One of us up here speaks to you. Yeah. One of us Ooh. up here resonates with you in a, in a much deeper level yep. than the others. And that doesn't mean that you don't, that you dislike the other two. That's not what that means. What it means is that one of us really speaks to your heart and and that's the person i believe that you should actually invest in mm -hmm. because this business requires your time and your attention and i sure as heck don't want you to give and your focus time and focus and you can't be giving your time and your attention and your focus away to somebody that you don't resonate with mm -hmm. literally look at your options and say when when I listen to this person and I go to their YouTube channel and I hear the things they talk about or I watch Wholesale Hotline and I hear their responses to questions or I'm on their social medias and I'm watching their stories and I'm watching their, their posts, which individual standing here speaks to you the best? My, my, gut, my gut tells me for you, sir, it's Pace. Okay, that's just my gut. My gut tells me that, it's, that that's who's speaking to you at a deeper level. And, and I, I don't know why I'm saying that. I'm just, it's just what I feel. And so that's what I, that's when I say, even though he says do it last, I say, do what your heart tells you. Mm -hmm. If you don't like dirty jokes, don't join anything in my world. Okay. Cause I, once a week I will say an offensive joke, no cuss words, but I will tell a dirty joke usually about my wife and I making babies. So if you don't like that, I'm not going to change. I want to be who I am authentic, genuine, et cetera. So Jamil's right. I love that advice. Go, um, you and know. I, and I swear every once in a while. So like if that bugs you. And you don't say. 
Um, Brent Daniels introduced me to Tom Kroll. Tom Kroll taught me something I really liked. He said, your vibe will attract your tribe. That's right. Okay. And so what, whatever, whoever's vibe you uh, agree with, I'm, I'm a TTP student. I'm an Astro student as well. I also am the first sub two student. So just so you know, I hold number one spot in my own mentorship. But I've got to say that it, if I'm going to, if I'm really going to be honest with respect to the, the most incredible creative finance community course and, and knowledge based mm -hmm. instruction, there is not a person on the planet that touches this man right over here. Truth. I've, I know them all. I'm, I'm friendly with them all. I actually like half of them. Are you mad at some of them because they sold you DVDs and you didn't have a DVD no, player? No, I could care less about that. But what I, <laughs> but what I, what I can really say is that I know that these people have been in the business longer than you. Yeah. But they are not doing the deals that you're doing. They are not still in the business. Right. That very many of them have, have hung up the hat of going out and doing deals. And now they are here to just teach you about how to do deals, which I'm not against. But what I want to say is that you want somebody that is in the business right now who can teach you about how things are going right now because we need real-time information for real-time deals. And so if you are looking at understanding the world of creative finance, he also talks about wholesale. He also talks about flip fixing and flipping. He also talks about so many different gator lending, so many different ways that you can monetize your spot in this business. This is why this man is incredible. For those of you that are looking at, hey, I just want to get on the phone and I want to hop on calls and I want to know what lists I need to download and where I should get the best skip tracing and what my, how do I approach these sellers and what are the things I do and how do I make this happen? How do I TTP? When that speaks to your heart, you know there's one man on the planet that can talk to you about that at the highest and best level. And again, that's me. No, that's that's Brent Daniels. That was a, the, one of the best jokes I think I had all night. Crush it. I was I was like, wait, this, what? This man is the, he is by far the best at at helping you understand that process to get out there and be a slayer of contracts. Agreed. And even when I left Homevestors, the first thing that I invested in was TTP. You did. Yep. And I I went. Or you in, could just go with the guy that's wholesaled more properties than everybody else on the planet. You know what I mean? Yeah, but like, he, he could be the problem is he cusses every once in a while. Yeah, he's he, he, he does take his shirt off. He pops does take, that top sometimes. He's done it on stage. He's I've been there. That top. I've done that. Yep. Okay. Um, <laughs> David says pace is funny to me. I la I have laughed so many times with that guy. That's great. I love that. Okay. Um, all right. Jonathan says chill. Okay. All right, bro. I'm freaking sorry, man. I'm sorry, bro. Um, it's my cousin. It's fine. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, cool. Um, so guys, we've got another 18 minutes on here. Yep. Let's get some more. Let's, um, yeah. yeah, you do. Manny Blue says, I Manny need a Blue, Lamborghini. You got to get the Lambo, guys. Lloyd Alexander says, I have a seller. Mm -hmm. Let's just assume it's the only heir. Mm -hmm. We're talking about some probate stuff. Somebody died already that hasn't started the probate. His dad's property is in pre foreclosure. He wants to sell. Can I pause foreclosure while doing probate? Bro, Lloyd. Lloyd. The answer is 100% yes. Okay. I've done, I did a deal with Brent Daniels a couple of years ago, exact situation, foreclosure. Yep. The, the heirs were like, we can't afford probate. We're going to let the house go to foreclosure. I'm like, no, 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 no. Do not let the house go to foreclosure. I will buy it subject to. And the heir goes, wait, you can buy my mom's house and take over my mom who's passed away. You can take over her mortgage. And I go, yeah. I can do that. She goes, yeah, but she's getting foreclosed on in two weeks. I go, <laughs> that's no big deal. I got a, I got a Laura Morby on my team. Mm -hmm. Laura Morby will stop or postpone the foreclosure, which she did 180 days. We get an extra six months on the foreclosure. We bought it subject to, took it through probate, bada bing, bada boom. I still own that house today. May I ask um, yeah. for a, can I make a request for the audience for yeah. you and Laura? Can Laura do a mini course? on stopping foreclosure? Yeah, she's just already started. She put out, I think, one little mini episode on her YouTube channel teasing it. Awesome. And so she's actually going through right now, building it out. She hired a guy named Ben that is helping her film one day a week and to build that mini course. Do you know what Laura's YouTube channel's name is? And is there a link that we can provide in the chat so that everybody here can go and subscribe to Laura Morby's YouTube channel? Because the facts are, guys, is that 
that little mini course is probably one of the most important things that you're going to need to know if and when you get into getting deals under that are in foreclosure under contract. Love that. Love that. Love that. Um, so, Ooh, this is a good question. In the elephant challenge, are we learning both sub two and wholesale or just one in the elephant challenge? You will learn very little creative finance. The elephant challenge is to teach you the basics of real estate and to get you to squad up by force. I'm going to lightly choke you just by force and push you up against the wall to force you to work with my students who are experienced, trained, et cetera. That is my goal with the elephant challenge. I also am trying to grow my Facebook group. It's at 60,000 people. By the end of next year, I wanted to be 120,000 people. And the way I'm doing is that is, is teaching you guys how to do um, cash deals, cash offers, those types of things. And when you run into creative finance opportunities, you will have my students to buddy up with. They will help you out with the paperwork. They'll help you out with the conversations with the sellers. They'll help you out with, with all that stuff. And guess who's training them on sales? Mr. Daniel Quijano during the nightly dial 20 hours a week, my students are being trained on creative finance training or sales training right. with for, from Quijano. So our goal is to train some badass students to then pour into you in the elephant challenge so that you have a buddy system with my leaders. We are trying to change the game y'all, by the way, um, Bobby, Thank you so much for putting that link in for Laura. That was super sweet. Guys, you guys don't know this, but we got Bobby Two Hands behind the stage. Get over here, Bobby. Bobby, come say hi come to everybody on. so they know what's up. He's got to fix his hat, guys. He there we go. Hello, there he is. is. Isn't he handsome? <laughs> Bobby, is, Bobby is one of the most special people on the planet. He has created some of the greatest content, the direction, the production, in order to deliver this content at such a high level. This is the guy. He's the mastermind behind like 90% of what makes Jamil and myself Look halfway. Who, there was so. no genie before. Who Bob. did the blue genie? That was me. Yeah. The real genie. The genie right here. The genie idea was 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 definitely came to me from a little download. Yeah. From making me the genie is all him. And we actually write a lot of these ads together. But you guys don't know this, but Bobby's actually in, extremely funny. We <laughs> like, both have done stand up. Yeah. Yeah. Um, are yep. there any single women in the chat? Hilarious. <laughs> I can't believe that's he had an opportunity to talk to 600 people. <laughs> Look how tall he is. He's a he handsome said, guy. He asked, any of you single He's ladies? He's single. What, how do they get a hold of you? Holy moly. How do they slide uh, in? Bobby, why don't you put your IG in the chat here? Yeah, put your IG. You, and hey, all of you guys that have a D-pick handy, also send him those as well. Yeah, he's yep. into His that. His IG is in the chat. Yeah, I, I like it. Um, people asking, what's the name of my Facebook group? Um, the Facebook group is called Creative Finance with Pace Morby. Okay, so go to facebook.com forward slash groups forward slash Creative Finance with Pace Morby. It is the largest by a long shot, the largest Creative Finance Facebook group on the planet. 10% of the people, this is how I've limited the growth of my mentorship is that 10% of the people in the free Facebook group are my trained students. That is has always been my goal. I want one out of 10 people being a student so that my students can have nine people to help, encourage, and essentially so that my students can retain what they're learning from me because 90% of what we learn and retain comes from us doing what? Teaching it, baby. Teaching it, practicing it, putting it into motion. So we really want our students I, to put I it into the thing. I saw an individual say there, hey, I've, I've, I've watched all the YouTube mm -hmm. videos. I have bought Privy. Mm -hmm. Still no deals. That was the, the I don't know if you can find that that comment. I'd love to, I'd, I'd love to go into this and kind of get your guys' opinion as to what may be happening here. Was it underneath this green one? Um, was it, it recent? Was above, up, up, up a little bit. It's been a couple of times. Bobby, can you find it? Bob, um, Bob, so the lobster is going to find it. Give Bobby some love, by the way, guys. He's over here. I, I don't think Jamil's paid him in two years. Nope. Okay. Just kidding. He's balling out. I actually asked him for Bobby's a loan ball, last week. Bobby's balling, bro. Bobby's balling. When, uh, when we, I had to set up payroll last week, and um, my executive assistant was like, hey, can you tell me um, what we pay Bobby so, so that I can put it into the thing? And I, and I wrote and I told her the number, and her next response was WTH. W T H. Yeah. What the hell? Oh, okay. What the hell? Oh, that was nice. She said, what the hell? Yeah. So, um, here's where I think there, and you know, Pace and Brent, I'd love your guys' opinion on this. So 
you're watching the YouTube videos and you've mm -hmm. got the software and there's no deals. Yep. What I can say is what you didn't say in that thing is I took massive action and then I took the things that I had been watching on the videos and I applied them to use the tools that are available to then go off and make mistakes or to go off and make offers and to try to get opportunities under contract. You didn't mention what your KPIs are because anytime I've got a student mm -hmm. who says to me that I'm having a hard time, I don't, I haven't gotten a deal. I said, great, come to the, come to our support call and I need you to come equipped with the following things. What are your outputs? How many, how many properties are you looking at every day? How many properties are you comping every day? How many pro offers are you making? How many real estate agents did you talk to? Are you tracking those numbers? So if dude, you're the last one. Yes. How many real estate agents, agents are, are you, you talking, talking to? to? Yes. If you don't have these numbers tracked, it's impossible for me to help you diagnose what the problem is, but I can tell you what the problem is. The fact that you're not tracking these numbers, is it's very likely that you aren't going and doing those steps because you're probably still sitting waiting to try to figure this all out. Maybe you're not, or maybe the amount of action that you're taking is, is really not enough. Maybe you're only having five, three or four or five conversations a day. Maybe, maybe that's what's happening. And guys, you have to understand that this business where you're going to make 20, 50, hundred thousand dollars a month. If you think this is going to happen with you just hanging around and, and, and doing a little of this and a little of that and having a call here and a call there, if you think that those are the results that you deserve with that type of output, that that doesn't match. What do you guys think? You got to talk to 200 property owners that own ugly houses to get a deal. And it usually takes 90 days before you get paid on that. Let it sink in. Like you can't, and, 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 and I get it. When I first started making calls, like 10 conversations a week would, felt like a lot. That felt heavy. That was uncomfortable. That was like my gut was twisted the whole time, right? 200 you have to do 20 times that amount, 99.5%. And I don't know what it is with agents. You had mentioned before one out of 300. I don't know if that's still the, the, the case, but let's say that that is. You have to talk to 300 agents to get your first deal. That doesn't mean that you're not building relationships and getting referrals from that those efforts, right. but you have to talk to an insane amount of people. And if you have never had conversations about real estate with real estate agents and with property owners, it feels real heavy up front. That's why I say get it done as fast as possible. Have as many quality conversations with these people as quickly as possible, and you're going to build up your endurance. You're going to build up your skills. You're going to build up your ability to communicate effectively with these people. And so if you're just sending out offers and sending texts, if you're just sending out offers and not following it up, if you're not on your phone all the time, it's going to take much longer. It's going to take far longer. You need to master this box right here. It is the portal. It is the portal to whatever you want to make. It truly is. Um, Here's something that's interesting. So the real BK says, please pace. I'll do whatever it takes. It's a long story, but I was down and out and I'm back. I signed up for a sub two, two plus weeks ago, and I need a mentor and guidance. I don't know your name first and foremost. I also know that I do 26 support calls on a mm -hmm. weekly basis. 26. In fact, after wholesale hotline, I don't know if you guys know this, but I typically do a two hour zoom after wholesale hotline with new students that I just want to get to know them. My wife did a private Zoom today for three hours for my students as a bonus, comping and looking at deals. Tomorrow, I will have two Zooms that I do, one on multifamily and a second one on four to five, sometimes six hours of general Q&A. Dan Quijano runs the nightly dial 20 hours a week. The nightly dial is calling your leads inside of sub two. So if you're a sub two student and you're saying, I've been in two weeks and I need mentorship and guidance, it's because you're not following the text messages we're sending, the phone calls and the emails we're sending where you should be getting support. Also, every single Monday or Sunday, I release my schedule for the week and I give you a video explaining everything I'm doing. Where have you been and why haven't you come into the 26 support calls that we do on a weekly basis? And also, as a sub two student, you have access to live calls for the rest of your life. I'm the pioneer of that. Nobody even thought to do that until I did it two and a half years ago. I pioneered it. 
Why aren't you with me? And tonight, I'm going to dinner with Gino Paloma out of, Gino. At Gino out of Atlanta. He's in town for CG, and he's coming. He's like, bro, I've literally paid for every mentorship on the planet. You, I send my guys to your Zooms. I come into the Zooms two and a half years later, and I'm still learning and changing the game in my, my business every single day. So if you are a newer student of mine, also, you should know that you should be in the daily dial with all the leaders, people that are making millions of dollars. So you do have help and guidance. I have not seen you come and talk to me in multiple, 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 multiple Zooms on a weekly basis. Um, here's a good question for you guys. Yep. Okay, no worries. Um, Oscar says, mm -hmm. do Jamil, J Jamil and Brent, do you guys have a Facebook group? I absolutely do. So I have one... Uh, exclusive one for the Astro Flipping Elite students, and there's over 3,500 members in there. It's just students, okay? We then have the general Astro Flipping public page, which has thousands and thousands, I think 15,000 people in it. But one of the groups that I'm really proud of that I feel has a lot of engagement and a lot of people helping each other out with is the Secret Agent Challenge Facebook group. It's a small, intimate group. Hmm. They go in, they really help each other out with agent outreach. And so, Oscar, if you'd like to join that Facebook group, you can. You just go into Facebook and you search Secret Agent Challenge and you'll find the Facebook group. Um, just request to get added to that. And we're happy to accept you and for you to engage with and love on all the people in there. Wholesaling Inc. Wholesaling Inc. Facebook group. We're in it every How many single members you got in day. Group, bro? Um, 19,000. Wow. 19,000. 19,000 people watching or in that whole in that Facebook group and Brent is now uh the the the, the true owner of the Rhino Nation. Yep, Rhino Tribe. Rhino Tribe. That's it. And uh there's the incredible. Astro Gliders and then there's the Wholesaling Inc Rhinos. Are you guys the Rhinos cuz you're horny for deals? We <laughs> go after deals <laughs> relentlessly. <So good. laughs> Sorry. Um, what do you guys think about having Laura come in here on Wholesale Hotline at some point and talk only about stopping and, and postponing foreclosures? I think it's huge. I think that's massive, massive value, bro. Guys, what do you guys think? Would you guys want her to come out? She she'll we'll get a babysitter. She's got babies, and we'll we'll show you guys the process. Now, here's the thing that's really tough. Okay, I'm going to be honest with you guys. This is one of the hardest things about real estate. You can't learn real estate in an hour. You can't learn it in an hour and a half. A you can't learn it in two weeks. Can't learn in two weeks. Um, real estate is a lifelong pursuit. Anything that leads to billions and bill, literally billions of dollars of wealth is going to be a lifelong pursuit, okay? Michael Jordan didn't become Michael Jordan because he tried out for two weeks or mm -hmm. two years or even 10 years. The guy who won the most majestic games, the most memorable moments in all of basketball history, it took that man 20, 30 years of dead set practice to get to that point in that one moment, he could make that one shot with one second to go, okay? It is a lifelong pursuit. You have to stay on top of it. And you have to just know that this is what you really want to do. I know that this is the only business I ever want to do. So Wholesale Hotline is here to motivate, inspire, and give you some guidance and a path. And most important, it's here to get you guys to squat up and get to know each other in the side comments, okay? Okay. Whoever you whoever you guys are working with, TTP, Astro Flipping, uh, Sub2, it doesn't matter. And then a lot of people that are not students of anybody, we encourage you guys to work with our students in the side comments. Please do that. Take the time. Do that. Introduce yourselves. Laura will come in here for an hour, an hour and a half, and she will give a presentation. She'll break it all down. You are still going to need to learn how to do it by implementing it, mm -hmm. screwing it up, asking 100 questions about it. And that is why you need to link in with Astro Flipping students, Sub2 students, and TTP students because they've been through it. They have active training going on all the time. If you are a non-student, find a student of one of our programs in the side chat and say, can I link in with you as I take action and I screw things up? Can I bring questions to you or can I bring value to you by bringing leads and opportunities to you? Okay? Massive uh, imperfect action. That's the name of the game. Uh, the, 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 the real, I am not angry at you at all. So he says, Pace, I am, I was dealing with the death, death of the child. I'm so sorry to hear that. There's literally nothing worse on the planet. I don't want to play victim. It's all on me. 
Thank you for taking responsibility. I'm sorry for what you went through. The I, I would never get upset with people. I am passionate, however, by how hard I work and how much time I sacrifice away from my family to provide value and support to my sub two family and community that when people say, please mentor me, I go, I've been desperately trying 26 times a week and you haven't been showing up. Okay. I understand why you haven't been showing up. Come see me tomorrow. I would love to have a one-on-one -on -one conversation with you in the Tuesday Q and a let's let we'll all say a prayer for your lost child. I'm very sorry that you went through that. Everybody, everybody, everybody has had loss in their life, but there's nothing worse than losing a child. I watched my parents go through it. It is absolutely atrocious. And I'm sorry you had to go through that. So um, we love you. We appreciate you. I wish everybody used their real name so I could call you out and I think, memorize I, I, you. Yeah, I think this uh, individual's name is Brooke. They said it in a comment. Oh, earlier. they did. Okay. Yeah. So, Brooke, we, your our heart goes out to all of us. Our heart goes out to you. The entire Wholesale Hotline audience is praying for you. Uh, and everybody, if you would, send, send Brooke love, affection, positive vibes, and Pace will see you on tomorrow's support call. Absolutely. So guys, we are one minute over. What are we talking about next week? What Brent Daniels, what, what are we talking about next week on Wholesale Hotline? Are we doing general Q&A next week? General Q&A. Okay, general yep. Q&A. By the way, guys, check out the podcast every single day. Every single day, original content in there. You have to check it out. It's really, really growing. The people that are, that are listening are getting a tremendous amount of value. It is, is all Jerry three of us there? and Jerry Norton on the weekend. Gosh, so I love it's Jerry. It's absolutely so incredible. Check it out. How many hundreds of thousands of downloads are happening in a month? We're up to 130,000 a month. Dang, I mean, son. 130,000. This isn't, this is, this is app, like listens, right? Yeah. Listens. Guys, listens, not downloads. Downloads can be half a million, yeah. but 130,000 people listening to every broadcast every week. That's, a lot of folks and that's as many people that are out there taking action on their lives so mm -hmm. there's so many of you that are not watching this live right now that are going to hear this we love you we we appreciate you we appreciate you tuning in but do all of us and yourself a favor and get some uh, ducats in the karma bank and go leave us a review on the apple itunes podcast platform as well as the spotify because those reviews absolutely help us in growing and showing other people how amazing real estate can be for your financial future and show up to jamil's challenge don't make me freaking tell you again that that thing's going to be booked out and cooked out and you're going to come and dm me and go pace do you have a seat scale and escape got sold out people 100%. come and dm me and they go bro you got extra tickets i'm like don't i talked about it for two weeks and yeah. you've missed out i don't know what to tell you guys next week jamil's thing is going to be booked out cooked out done sign up for it tonight Prevent bright and every other little word along the, the lines. How do I get how do I get that link, Bobster the Lobster? Uh, if you just it on YouTube or okay. It, it's in our stories. Uh, stories. That's a great answer. It, Jamil will put the link in his Instagram stories. It is J Damsey on Instagram. Go click on that. Don't miss out. We'll see you next week. Bye. Nice. Love you guys. Or just say squat up. So squat up and enjoy the show. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. One, two, so three. squat up and enjoy the show. <laughs> what are you doing? I didn't say that thing. Why? I don't know. <laughs> okay. So squat up and enjoy the show. Cool. I think we should use the one where Jamil doesn't say anything. <laughs>